And now, in this lecture, we will find the area of the green shape in three different ways. In the drawing, we have a circle, and we know that the radius of this circle equals to 5 units, and uh, we also know that uh, angle ACB equals to 60 degrees, and uh, tangent AC is tangent to the circle at point A, and tangent CB is tangent to the circle at point B, and we want to find out the area of this green shape. So I will start with the first method. We will define the center of this circle as point O. Then we will join together points A and O by a straight line. Line segment AO is the radius of this circle that equals to 5 units because of the fact that line segment A, AO starts from the center of the circle, that is to say from point O, and ends at point A, that is the point on the circle itself, therefore AO is the radius of this circle that equals to 5 units. We will join together points O and B by a straight line. Actually, OB is the radius of this circle that equals to 5 units for the, same, for the same reason. It starts from the center of the circle and ends at point B. That is a point on the circle itself. Therefore, OB is the radius of this circle. And we also have a rule according to the rule that I will mention angle OBC equals to 90 degrees and angle OAC will be also equal to 90 degrees. Actually, the rule states that a tangent to the circle is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its tangency. So, if we have tangent to this circle, tangent BX is tangent to this circle at point X, and the the radius is drawn to the point of tangency, to, that is to say, to point X. Actually, the, the radius touches point X. So, in this situation, the radius will be perpendicular to the tangent BX. That is to say, this angle will be equal to 90 degrees. So, the rule states that A tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius. drawn to its tangency.
actually we have here tangent Px and we have the radius that is drawn to the point of tangency that is to say to point x therefore the tangent is perpendicular to the radius that is to say this angle equals to 90 degrees okay so according to this rule we have here tangent CB that is tangent to this circle at point B and we have the radius that is drawn to the point of tangency that is to say to point B therefore the tangent is perpendicular to the radius that is to say angle CBO equals to 90 degrees and the same thing is for tangent CA that is tangent to this circle at point A and the radius is drawn to the point of tangency that is to say the radius is drawn to point A that is the point of tangency therefore according to the rule that I stated the tangent CA is perpendicular to the radius that is drawn to, the, to its tendency that is to say this angle is equal to 90 degrees because the tangent CA is perpendicular to the radius therefore this angle equals to 90 degrees okay and we also have another rule according to Two tangents theorem CB side CB equals to side CA uh, two tangents theorem states that the lengths of two tangents from a common external point to a circle or equal I will read the rule again the rule of two tangents theorem states that the lengths of two tangents from a common external point to a circle are equal so actually if we have a common external point E it is external point because, because this point is outside in the, this circle and it is not it is not inside the circle and it is not point E is not on the circle itself therefore point E is external point in relation to this circle so if we draw two tangents from point E to this circle tangent EB is tangent to this circle at point B and the the other tangent tangent E C is tangent to this circle at point C then according to this rule when you draw two tangents 
from a common external point to a circle, then the lengths of those two tangents will be equal to each other. That is to say, BE will be equal to B to EC. Okay, the lengths of those two tangents are equal to each other because whenever you draw from a common external point, that is to say from point E, two tangents to a circle, then the lengths of those two tangents will be equal to each other, that is to say BE equals to EC. Okay? So, we can implement the two tangent theorem in our drawing because we have a common external point, point C, and from this common external point, point C, we have two tangents to this circle. We have tangent CA that is tangent to the circle at point A, and we have tangent CB that is tangent to this circle at point B. Therefore, the lengths of those two tangents will be equal to each other. That is to say, CA will be equal to CB according to two tangents theorem. Okay? CA will be equal to CB according to two tangents theorem. Again, from a common external point, we have two tangents to this circle, tangent CA and tangent CB, according to two tangents theorem, CA equals to CB. Okay, the lengths of those two tangents to a circle are equal to each other, that is to say CA equals to CB, according to two tangents theorem. Okay? So, in the next step, we will join together point C and O by a straight line. focus on triangle AOC and we'll focus on triangle AOC and on triangle BOC. Okay. So, on those two triangles, we know that AO equals to BO equals to the radius of this circle that equals to 5 units. Okay, AO of triangle AOC equals to BO of triangle BOC. Both of them are equal to the radius of this circle that equals to 5 units according to what is given us in the question. Okay, AO equals to BO equals to the radius of the circle that equals to 5 units. And we also know that AC equals to BC according to two tangents theorem. AC 
equals to BC according to two tendons theorem. AC equals to BC according to two tendons theorem. Okay, AC equals to BC according to two tendons theorem. And OC is the common side, it belongs to both triangles, to triangle AOC, and OC also belongs to triangle BOC. So AC equals to AC. It is actually a common side, it belongs to both triangles. Okay, AC equals to AC. It is a common side because it belongs to both triangles. So, actually we proved that all the sides of triangle AOC are equal to all the sides of triangle BOC. Therefore, those two triangles can run to each other according to side, side, side rule. Okay, so triangle AOC is congruent to triangle BOC according to side 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 rule. Okay, triangle AOC can go into triangle BOC according to side 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 rule. So what is side 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 rule? Side 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 rule says that if you prove that all the sides of one triangle are equal to all the sides of another triangle, then those two triangles can go into each other according to side 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 rule. Okay, so from the fact that those two triangles can go into each other, we can conclude that angle OCA, this angle equals to angle B OCB. Angle OCA equals to angle OCB. Those two angles are equal to each other. The angles, the angles that I marked with the red line are equal to each other according to the rule that corresponding angles incongruent triangles are equal to each other. Okay, corresponding angles incongruent triangles equal to each other. And then angle OCA equals to angle OCB according to the rule that corresponding angles in congruent triangles are equal to each other. Actually triangle or AOC is congruent to triangle BOC according to side 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 rule. Therefore, the corresponding angles, angle ACO is equal to angle 
BCO because they are corresponding angles and, and corresponding angles in congruent triangles are equal to each other. So if we define one angle, angle ACO is X, then angle BO, BCO or angle OCB will be also equal to X because they are equal to each other. Okay, so angle ACO equals to X and angle BCO also equals to X, so those two angles, the sum of those two angles is 2 n and 2 x, x plus x is 2 x, and 2 x equals to 60 degrees. It is given us in the question. So 2 x equals to 60 degrees. 2 x equals to 60 degrees. And if we divide this equality by 2, we will get that x equals to 30 degrees x equals to 30 degrees, so angle ACO equals to 30 degrees, and angle BCO also equal to 30 degrees, okay? So the next step we will focus on the right triangle, triangle ACO, so on the right triangle, triangle ACO, this triangle we know that tangents thirty degrees. equals to AO equals to AO over AC in the right triangle ACO we know that triangle 30 degrees equals to AO over AC okay but what is the value of AO AO equals to 5 units it is the radius of this circle, so we will substitute AO by 5, so it is 5 over AC, tangents 30 degrees equals to 5 over AC, and we know that tangents 30 degrees equals to 1 over root 3, so I write it down, 1 over root 3 equals to 5 over AC. Here we will multiply this equality by AC and we will get that AC over root 3 equals to 5. Here we will multiply this equality by root 3 in order to get the value of AC. So AC will be equal to 5 times root 3 units. AC equals to 5 times root 3 units. So we can write here that AC equals to 5 times root 3 units and because of the fact that AC equals to BC according to 2 tangents theorem, BC will be also equal to 5 times root 3 units. We will continue to focus on the right triangle, triangle ACO. What is the area of the right triangle, triangle ACO? That is the way that we uh, That is actually the sign for the area of triangle ACO. This sign means that the area of triangle ACO, so the area of triangle ACO equals to the base of the triangle ACO times the height 
to the base of the two. Again, the area of the right triangle, triangle ACO, equals to the base of triangle ACO times the height to the base over 2. So the area of triangle ACO equals to the base, the base is AO, and the height to the base is AC over 2. So the area of triangle ACO equals to AO times AC over 2. But what is the value of AO? AO equals to 5 units. It is given us in the question. And what is the value of AC? AC equals to 5 times root 3. We already found out that AC equals to 5 times root 3 units. Over 2. So in total we got that the area of triangle ACO equals to 5 times 5 times root 3 over 2 square units. So 5 times 5 is 25, so I'll write it now, that the area of triangle ACO equals to 25 times root 3 over 2 square units. Okay, again, the area of triangle SEO equals to 25 times root 3 over 2 square units. Okay? But because of the fact that triangle SEO can go into triangle BCO, those two triangles can go into each other according to side, side, side rule, we can conclude from it that the areas of triangles ACO and BCO are equal to each other. So the area of triangle ACO is equal to the area of triangle BCO. Okay? The area of triangle ACO is equal to the area of triangle BCO because they can run to each other. Okay? And uh, what is the area of quadrilateral ABCO? The area of quadrilateral ABCO it It uh, com consists of two triangles, so the area equals to triangle AOC plus the area of triangle POC, because quadrilateral ABCO consists of two triangles, so it equals to the area of triangle ACO plus the area of triangle BCO. Again. The area of quadrilateral ABCO equals to the area of triangle ACO plus the area of triangle BCO. Again, the area of quadrilateral ABCO equals to the area of triangle ACO plus the area of triangle BCO.
Okay? But we have already found that the arm of triangle ACO corresponds to the arm of triangle BCO. So we can substitute the arm of triangle ACO by we can substitute the arm of triangle BCO by the arm of triangle ACO. So the arm of triangle A, uh, the arm of quadrilateral ABCO will be equal to the arm of triangle ACO plus in, we will substitute the arm of triangle BCO by the arm of triangle ACO because they are equal to each other. So, we got that the area of quadrilateral ABCO equals to two times the area of triangle ACO. So, I write it down that the area of quadrilateral ABCO equals to two times the area of triangle ACO. Okay, the area of quadrilateral ABCO equals to two times the area of triangle ACO. We have already found out that the area of triangle ACO equals to 25 times root 3 over 2 square units. Okay, so the area of triangle ABCO, the area of quadrilateral ABCO, will be equal to two times the area of uh, triangle ACO that equals to 25 times root 3 over 2. So the area of quadrilateral ABCO equals to two times 25 times root 3 over 2. Here, 2 over 2 is 1. So 2 get cancelled. So the area of target ABCO will be equal to 25 times root 3 square units. The area of quadrilateral ABCO equals to 25 times root 3 square units. Okay, the area of quadrilateral ABCO equals to 25 times root 3 square units. But what is the area of the green shape? The area of this green shape equals to the area of quadrilateral ABCO minus the area of sector ABO. Again, the area of the, this green shape equals to the area of quadrilateral ABCO minus the area of sector ABO. Okay, so I write it down. The area of the green shape equals to the area of quadrilateral ABCO minus the area of sector ABO. Again, the area of the green shape equals to the area of quadrilateral ABCO minus the area of sector ABO. We have already found out that the area of quadrilateral ABCO equals to 25 times root 3 square units and the only thing that is left to do is to find out the area of sector ABO. 
So, first of all, we have a rule that states that the sum of the angles in any quadrilateral equals to 360 degrees. Okay, I will write down the rule. The rule states that the sum of the angles in any quadrilateral the sum of the angles in any quadrilateral is equal to 360 degrees. I will read the rule again. The rule states that the sum of the angles in any quadrilateral is equal to 360 degrees. And especially in quadrilateral ABCO, according to that rule, the sum of the angles must be equal to 360 degrees. So what is the sum of the angles in quadrilateral ABCO? The sum of the angles in quadrilateral ABCO equals to 60 degrees plus 90 degrees plus 90 degrees plus the size of angle AOB, the size of this angle. And the sum of this, those three, four angles must be equal to 360 degrees according to the rule that I stated. Okay? 60 degrees plus 90 degrees plus 90 degrees plus the size of angle AOB must be equal to 360 degrees according to this rule. So here we have 60 degrees plus 90 degrees plus 90 degrees is 240 degrees. So I'm writing down. Two hundred forty degrees plus the size of angle A or B must be equal to 360 degrees according to the rule that I stated. So here we will subtract 240 degrees from this equality and we will get that the size of angle AOB equals to 360 degrees minus 240 degrees is 120 degrees. Okay, we found out that the size of angle A or B, this angle, is 120 degrees. So now we can calculate the area of sector A or B, the area of this shape, sector A or B. The area of sector A or B will be equal to pi r square, that is the area of the circle, times 120 degrees over 360 degrees. Again, the area of sector AOB equals to pi r squared, that is the area of the circle, times 
120 degrees over 360 degrees. We know that r equals to 5, so pi r squared will be equal to 25 pi. So I will write it down. So the area of sector A or B will be equal to 25 pi. 120 degrees over 600 over 120 degrees over 360 degrees is 1 over 3. So we found out that the area of sector A or B equals to 25 over 3 square units. And we have already found out that the area of quadrilateral ABCO equals to 25 times root 3 square units. So the only thing that is left to do is to substitute, uh, to subtract the area of sector AOB from the area of quadrilateral ABCO and that will be the area of the, this green shape. So the area of the green shape will be equal to the area of quadrilateral ABCO that is 25 times root 3 square units minus the area of sector AOB that is 25 pi over 3 square units. So we found out that the area of the green shape equals to 25 times root 3 that is the area of quadrilateral ABCO minus the area of sector ABO that is equal to 25 pi over 3 square units. Okay, so that is the final answer to the question. So we finished with method 1. Okay. So In the next step, we will find the area of this green shape in a second method. We have to find out the area of this green shape We have the same data We know that angle ACB equals to 60 degrees and we also know that the radius of this circle equals to 5 units and CA is tangent to this circle at point A while CB is tangent to this circle at point B and we have 
to find out the area of this green shape. Okay. First of all, we will join together points A and B by a straight line. So by joining together points A and B, we created triangle ABC. So we will focus on triangle ABC. We know that AC equals to BC according to two tangents theorem. I will not repeat on it. I, I did it in the explain about it in the first method, so I will not repeat on it. We know that AC equals to BC according to two tangents theorem. Okay, so I will write it down that. AC equals to BC according to two tangents theorem. Actually, we have a rule. The rule states that in front of equal sides in the triangle, there are equal angles. So in front of BC, we have angle BAC, this angle. And in front of AC, we have angle ABC, this angle. And according to the rule that is stated, in front of equal sides in the triangle there are equal angles. So those two angles are equal to each other. So if one angle will be defined, if angle BAC will be defined as X, then angle ABC will be also equal to X because those two angles are equal to each other. Okay, and we know that the sum of the angles in any triangle equals to 180 degrees and especially the sum of the angles in triangle ABC equals to 180 degrees. That is to say 60 degrees plus angle X plus angle X must be equal to 180 degrees according to the rule that I stated that the sum of the angles in any triangle equals to 180 degrees. Okay, so we got this equality, 60 degrees plus x plus x equals to 100, 100, uh, 280 degrees. We will subtract 60 degrees from this equality, and we will get that x plus x is 2x equals to 180 degrees minus 60 degrees is 120 degrees. So we will divide this equality to, by 2 and we will get that x equals to 60 degrees. So we found out that the size of angle x is 60 degrees. So this angle equals to 60 degrees and this angle x also equals to 60 degrees. Okay, so we have in the angle ABC three angles that are equal to 60 degrees. Therefore, we can deduce to conclude that triangle ABC is an equilateral triangle. Okay, triangle ABC is an equilateral triangle because it has three angles that are equal to 60 degrees. So, in the next step, we will define the center of this circle as point O. Then, we will join together points A and O by a straight line. 
Again, we know that AO is the radius of this circle that equals to five units. I will not repeat about it. We, I did it in method one. And the angle OAC equals to 90 degrees. According to the rule that a tangent to the circle is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its tangency. This, so angle OAC equals to 90 degrees. We will join together points O and B by a straight line. OB is the radius of this circle that equals to 5 units. And angle OBC equals to 90 degrees according to the same rule. Okay. And uh, we will join together points O and C by a straight line. Actually, I have already proved in method one the triangle AOC is going to triangle BOC, but I will repeat it. I will repeat on the proof quickly. We will focus on those two triangles. We know that OA equals to OB equals to the radius of this circle that equals to five units. OA. equals to OB that equals to 5 units. We also know that AC equals to BC according to two tangents theorem. AC equals to BC according to two tangents theorem. Okay, O A equals to O B equals to five units. A C equals to B C according to two to two tangents theorem, and O C is the current side. It belongs to both triangles, so O C equals to O C. It is the current side. It belongs to both triangles. So. We proved that all the sides of triangle OSC are equal to all the sides of triangle OBC, of triangle OBC. Therefore, those two triangles can run to each other according to side, side, side rule. Okay, tri uh, triangle AOB can run to triangle AOC according to side 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 wall and from the fact that the, those two triangles can go into each other we can derive that angle OCB equals to angle OCA according to the rule that corresponding angles in congruent triangles are equal to each other and if we define one angle as x, then the other angle will be also equal to x because they are equal to each other. So from the drawing, you can see that 2x equals to 60 degrees. Two x equals to 60 degrees. And if we divide this equality by two, we will get that x equals to 30 degrees x equals to 30 degrees so angle OCA equals to 30 degrees and also angle OCB equals to 30 degrees according to the rule that corresponding 
Hagen simply went to angle are equal to each other, they are equal to each other, and we found, and we found that the size of each angle equals to 30 degrees. Okay, so in the next step, we will extend side OC until it touches the circle at point H. Okay, we extend that side OC until it touches the circle at point H. Then we will draw tangent to the circle at point H. of this circle because of the fact that it starts from the center of the circle that is to say from point O and ends at point H that is a point of the circle itself therefore O H is the radius of the circle and we have here a tangent and the radius are always perpendicular to each other so angle C H this angle is a right angle it equals to 90 degrees and angle CH, the other side, it is also equals to 90 degrees. In the next step, we will extend AC until it intersects with the tangent, and we will define the intersection point between the tangent and AC is point P. Again, point P is the intersection point between the tangent and CA. And we will also extend CB until it intersects with the tangent. And we will call to the intersection point between the tangent and CB, point Q. Point Q is, inter is the intersection point between the tangent and CB. Okay, so we actually created here target CPQ. And uh, we know that the sum of the angles in any triangle equals to 180 degrees. And Especially the sum of the angles in the right triangle CHP is equal to 180 degrees. That is to say, here we have 60 degrees. degrees. Actually, this angle equals to 30 degrees in the red color. Plus angle CHP that equals to 90 degrees. Plus the size of angle CPQ must be equal to 180 degrees. Again, in the right triangle, triangle CHP, the sum of the angles is equal to 180 degrees. So here we have 30 degrees plus 90 degrees is 120 degrees. So I will write it down. So we get that 120 degrees plus plus 
the size of angle CPQ equals to 180 degrees. So here we will subtract from this equality 120 degrees and we will get that the size of angle CPQ equals to 180 degrees minus 120 degrees is 60 degrees. Okay, the size of angle CPQ is 60 degrees. We will repeat on the same process on the right angle, triangle CHQ. This right triangle, triangle CHQ. We know that the sum of the angles in triangle CHQ equals to 180 degrees, that is to say 30 degrees plus 90 degrees. plus the size of angle CQP must be equal to 180 degrees. Again, this equality states that the sum of the angles in the right triangle CHQ equals to 180 degrees. So 30 degrees plus 90 degrees is 180 degrees. 20 degrees, 120 degrees plus angle CPQ, C, uh, CQP equals to 180 degrees. So angle CP, CQP will be equal to 60 degrees. Angle CQP equals to 60 degrees. So, we actually found out that all the angles in the in triangle CQP equals to 60 degrees. Therefore, triangle CPQ is an equilateral triangle. Triangle CPQ is an equilateral triangle because all of its angles is equal all, all of its angles are equal to 60 degrees. Again, triangle CPQ is an equilateral triangle because all of its angles are equal to 60 degrees. So, in the next step, we will focus on the right triangle, triangle ACO. On the right triangle, triangle ACO. We know that tangents 30 degrees. Equals to AO over AC. Tangents 30 degrees equals to AO over AC. I did it in the first method, so I will not re repeat on it. From this equality, we we we'll get that AC equals to 5 times root 3 units. AC equals to 
a five times root three units. And because of the fact that AC equals to CB according to two tangents theorem, CB also will be equal to five times root three units. Okay? And uh, we have a rule that says that, so we know that triangle CPQ is an equilateral triangle, and we have a rule that states that the center of a circle inscribed in a triangle is the in center of the triangle. So here we have this circle that is inscribed inside triangle CPQ. Therefore, according to the rule that I stated, point O is the center of this equilateral triangle, triangle CPQ. And we have also a second rule that states that the height, the height uh, from the center of an equilateral triangle crosses the side. According to this rule, we have here equilateral triangle. So that rule means that if we draw from the center of this equilateral triangle, that is to say from point O, that is the center of this equilateral triangle, if we draw heights to its sides, then those eyes will divide the sides of triangle CP, uh, CPQ to two equal parts. So here we have OB is the height uh, of this, the height to the side CQ. So according to the rule that I stated, the height OB divides CQ to two equal parts. So CB equals to BQ. So, and we know that CB equals to five times root three. So BQ will be also equal to five times root three units. And we also know that AC uh, we know that OA, the height OA, that is from the center of the equilateral triangle, divides CP to two equal parts. That is to say AC equals to AP. And we know that AC equals to five times root three, so AP will be also equal to five times root three. And we know that all the sides of the equilateral triangle uh, CPQ are equal to each other, so PQ will be equal to 5 times root 3 plus 5 times root 3 is 10 times root 3. Okay? And we know that the height OH divides PQ to two equal parts. That is to say PH equals to HQ. And if we define PH as X, then PQ will be equal to 2x. So we can form the, for the equality that says that the size of PQ that is 2 times root 3 equals to x plus x. That is to say 2 times, uh, t 10 times root 3, that is, that is the size of PQ equals to x plus x, that is 2x. And if we divide this equality by 2, we will get that x equals to 5 times root 3. x equals to 5 times root 3. And uh, what is the area of triangle, the equilateral triangle, triangle CPQ? The area of any triangle equals to if we have triangle ABC, we know that the area of triangle ABC, if uh, the size of AB is A units and the size of AC is B units and the angle between AB and AC is theta, the area of this triangle 
is actually a times b the area of triangle ABC equals to a times b times sine theta over 2 so if we use this formula for the area of the triangle to calculate the area of the equilateral triangle triangle CPQ we will get that the area of equilateral triangle triangle CPQ equals to the area of equilateral triangle triangle CPQ equals to CP times CQ times sine 60 degrees over 2. That is according to the for formula that I showed you. The area of equilateral triangle, triangle CPQ equals to CP times CQ times sine 60 degrees over 2. We know that CP equals to CQ because it is an equilateral triangle. So we get that uh, 10 times root 3 square and sine 60 degrees is root 3 over 2. Root 3 over 2 over 2 is root 3 over 4. So the area of triangle CPQ equals to 10 times root 3 square times root 3 over 4. That is to say the area equals to 75 times root 3 the area of triangle CPQ equals to 75 times root 3 square units and the area of this circle equals to pi r square that is to say the area of the circle equals to 25 pi square units. The area of the circle equals to 25 pi square units. Because r equals to 5, so pi r square is 25 pi square units. The area of the circle equals to 25 pi square units. And the area of uh, equilateral triangle CPQ minus the area of the circle will be equal to 75 times root 3 minus 25 pi that is the area of the green shape plus the area of this blue shape plus the area of the yellow shape. But because of the fact that those three shapes are identical, then if we define the area of one shape as x, the area of those three shape, shapes will be equal to 3x. Okay, so the area of the triangle CPQ minus the area of the circle will be equal to 3x. And we know that the area of every shape is equal to x square units. So if we divide this expression by 3, we will get that Three x over three is x, and x is the area of each shape that it could be also the area of the green shape. So the area of the green shape will be equal to twenty-five times root three minus twenty-five pi over three square units, because the area of the three shapes, the area of the triangle 
the CPQ minus the area of the circle equals to the area of the green shape plus the area of the blue shape plus the area of the yellow shape. And we know that the areas of those three shapes are equal to each other. So if we define one area as S, then the area of the uh, green shape plus the area of the blue shape plus the area of, of the yellow shape will be equal to 3x. So if we divide 3x by 3, we will get the area of the green shape. So 3x over 3, that is to say this expression over 3, equals to the area of the green shape, that is actually 25 times root 3 minus 25 pi over 3 square units. Okay, so we finished with the second method. In the next step, I will present to you the first method to find out the area of this green shape. So, we will join points A and B by a straight line. And uh, we know that CB equals to AC according to two tangents theorem. And uh, we know that in front of equal sides in the triangle there are equal angles. So those two angles are equal to each other. And they are actually equal to 120 degrees because this angle equals to 60 degrees. So 120 degrees equals to 2x. So each angle equals to 60 degrees. So actually, triangle ABC is an equilateral triangle and we know that the area of the green shape equals to the area of the equilateral triangle, triangle ABC minus the area of circular segment AB. Okay? We will define the center of this circle as point O. We will join together points A and O by a straight line. AO is the radius of this circle that equals to 5 units. And we know that this angle is the right angle. According to the rule that a tangent to the circle is perpendicular to the radius that is drawn to its tangency. We will we'll join together points O and B by a straight line. We know that OB is the radius of this circle that equals to 5 units and angle OBC equals to 90 degrees according to the rule that I stated one minute ago. We will join together points C and O by a straight line. I have already proved that angle ACO equals to 30 degrees and angle OCB also equals to 30 degrees. We know that tangle 30 degrees equals to AO over AC. From this equality we will find out that the size of angle AC equals to 5 times root 3 and AC equals to BC, so BC also equals to 5 times root 3. Okay, and uh, we know that the area, we know that uh, uh, the area of equilateral triangle, triangle ABC, equals to 5 times root 3 times 5 times root 3 square. The area of triangle ABC equals to 5 times root square. 5 times 5 times root 3 square 
times sine 60 degrees over 2, that is root 3 over 4. Again, the area of triangle ABC equals to 5 times root 3 squared times root 3 over 4. So this is 75. 75 times root 3 over 4 square units. So the area of triangle ABC equals to 75 times root 3 over 4 square units. Again, the area of the green shape equals to the area of triangle ABC minus the area of circular segment AB, the area of this shape. So we have already found out that the area of triangle ABC equals to 75 times root 3 over 4 square units, and the only thing that is left to find was to find out the area of circular segment AB, the area of this shape. The area of this shape equals to the area of uh, the area uh, of uh, uh, the shape AOB, the, the area of the shape AOB, that is the area of uh, the shape AOB. minus the area of triangle AOB. So the area of circular segment AB equals to the area of sector AOB, the area of sector AOB minus the area of triangle AOB. We know that the sum of the angles in uh, any quadrilateral equals to 360 degrees. Therefore, this angle equals to 120 degrees. So the area of uh, sector AOB equals to pi r square. Pi r square is 25 pi times 120 degrees over 360 degrees, that is 1 over 3. So the area of sector AOB is 25 pi over 3 square units, and the area of triangle AOB, according to the formula that I presented to you, equals to 5 times 5, that is 25, times sine 120 degrees, that is root 3 over 2 over 2. So it is root 3 over 4. So the area of uh, circular segment AB equals to this expression. And the area of the green shape equals to the area of triangle ABC, that is 75 times root 3 over 4 Again, the area of triangle ABC equals to 75 times root 3 over 4 uh, square units. And the area of triangle a ABC minus the area of circular segment AB will be equal to the area of the green shape. And we already found out that the area of circular segment AB is this expression. So I will subtract this expression from the area of triangle ABC. We will get, and we will get the area of the green shape. So the area of triangle ABC minus the area 
of circular segment AB that is 25 pi over 3 minus 25 root 3 over 4 is equal to the area of the green shape. So here we will open the brackets and we will get that the area of the green shape equals to the area of triangle ABC minus this expression. After I will open the bracket, we will get that 75 times root 3 over 4 plus 25 times root 3 over 4 is 100 times root 3 over 4 minus 25 pi over 3 so we found out that the area of the green shape equals to this expression. So 100 over 4 is 25. So the area of the green shape equals to 25 times root 3 minus 25 pi over 3 square units. Again, the area of the green shape equals to 25 times root 3 minus 25 pi over 3 square units. Okay, so now I will summarize the lecture. Actually, we wanted to find out the area of this green shape. We found it in three different ways. The first method to find out the area of the green shape The area of the green shape according to the first method is the area of quadrilateral ABCO minus the area of sector ABO. So we found out that the area of triangle, the area of quadrilateral ABCO equals to twenty five times root three and the area of sector ABO equals to twenty five pi over three. So the area of the green shape equals to twenty five times root three minus twenty five pi over three square units. Then we found out the area of the green shape in a second method. The area of this green shape equals to the area of greater triangle ABCO minus the area of the circle over 3. Okay. So the area of greater triangle ABCO equals to 75 times root 3 minus the area of the circle is 25 pi. So when we subtract from the, uh, the area of the equilateral triangle AB, uh, the, the area of equilateral triangle CPQ minus the area of the circle, we will get the area of these three shapes. And if we divide the area of the three shapes by 3, we will get the area of the green shape. So the area of the green shape equals to 25 times root 3 minus 25 pi over 3 square units. Then we found out the area of the green shape in the third method. In the third method, the area of the green shape uh, equals to in the third method, the area of the green shape equals to the area of triangle ABC minus the area of circular segment AB. And the area of triangle ABC equals to 25 times root 3. And the area of circular segment AB equals to 25 pi over 3. So the area of triangle ABC 
minus the area of circular segment AB equals to the area of the green shape. So the area of the green shape equals to 25 times root 3 minus 25 pi over 3 square units. So the area of the green shape equals to 25 times root 3 minus 25 pi over 3 square units. Okay, thank you very much.